What's going on, people? Happy Friday afternoon. Sorry there was no morning video this morning. My schedule's a little uh, different right now compared to how it usually is. I didn't get a chance to uh, set up a video and put it up. Uh, I will be doing the uh, Pass Rush Friday video a little later today, so that is still certainly going to come out. Of course, you know we got to dig into the Pass Rush, especially after a game when the defense plays really well. But uh, before we get into that, I wanted to talk about this injury report, and this is going to be pretty quick, I think, because the news is pretty much all as expected, and it's all looking really good for these Seahawks. So let's start with the Buccaneers side, because they're the side that is actually missing, they're actually missing a few soldiers here. So let's uh, take a look here at what Tampa Bay reported earlier today. Russell Gage Jr. is out. Luke Godecki is out, and J.J. Russell is out. I believe they're not even in Germany right now, so even if there was some miraculous recovery, they w probably wouldn't be able to play at this point. They'd have to they'd have to jump on a red eye and get over there pretty quickly at this point, I guess. But uh, yeah, those guys all out, did not practice at all this week. Gage is fairly significant. He was a guy they brought in this offseason, intending for him to be at least a partially part uh, a partially relevant player to that offense right uh, obviously they got Julio and that kind of pushed Gage down the depth chart a little bit and by the way Julio full practice Thursday full practice Friday is going to play on uh on Sunday but Gage is out and knowing Julio's likelihood of getting injured at some point in this game let's let's just be uh, real here that could be significant uh, Luke Odecki, their guard, also out. Uh, we, we all know what issues the Buccaneers are having on that offensive line. We all know that the Buccaneers are having some real problems up front um, with the um, uh, retirement of, uh, I believe it was Ali Marpet, with losing Ryan Jensen. Uh, Donovan Smith doesn't look as good as he used to. And a, a loss of a guy like a Luke Odecki just piles onto that. So significant. J.J. Russell doesn't do a whole lot for them on their defense, so that's not a particularly huge loss. So that that's not really significant. They do have one questionable player, but I fully expect him to play. It's Cameron Brait, their tight end. He had a full week of practice, yet is still listed as questionable because the nature of his injury was so scary, I suspect. So Cameron Brait, I expect him to play, but technically he is questionable. If he doesn't play then you're talking about um, Kate Otten. And Kate Otten had a little bit of a coming out party last week, so either way, I don't think they lose a ton. It's not like Cameron Brait was some great tight end who's going to flip this game in all likelihood, but uh, you'd obviously rather have him than not have him. Uh, everybody else listed on the injury report it looks good to go. Mike Evans was limited all week in practice, but he's kind of he's kind of always limited, so that's nothing new. And other than that, the Buccaneers look good to go. Now, obviously, there's a lot of the there's a lot of stuff that is not listed here, like um, um, Shaq Barrett out for the year. That that's a big one. Um, without him, their pass rush becomes a lot less dangerous, and I think that opens up a lot of opportunities for this offense to do to do to do some very good things. But um, as for the injury report, that's about it. And now jumping over to the Seahawks side of things, we are clean, people. We are very, very clean. Colin Gillespie is out, but we all knew that, and he didn't play that much anyway, so that's fine. Um, we know he's out for the year. He just hasn't been put on the IR yet for some reason. Uh, Goodwin is questionable, but he had a full practice on Friday, so it would be very surprising if he doesn't play. You could argue maybe he won't be 100%, but I... Fully expect him to at least be out there and be better than what Dwayne Eskridge can give us or better than what uh, Derek Young, yeah, Derek Young can give us. So that's good. And everybody else, no designation. No designation at all. Um, the only thing worth noting among the guys who have no designation would be Shelby Harris did not practice on Friday, but apparently there's no concern of him missing the game because he's, again, not even listed here. So, not worried about that, and yeah, everybody else good to go, which isn't surprising based off what we saw yesterday, but it's good to see Ryan Neal get a full day of practice. Uh, Carol spoke earlier today and said that uh, Taylor was ready to play, which makes sense given the fact that he was in practice all week. 
So, yeah, everything's looking pretty good. I'm uh, pretty, pretty happy with the way this injury report shakes out. Again, of course, that doesn't include the guys like Jamal Adams, who have been out for the whole year. That doesn't include anybody who's on IR, like Rashad Penny. But given the fact that we're about midway through the year, a little more than midway through the year, having an injury report this clean, doesn't al- it doesn't always happen. And it's a big deal. You can see that like Metcalf and Lockett aren't even listed here at this point. That tells me they're as close to 100% as you're going to get this late in the season, which is big. All right, so that's it for your injury report. Uh, not too much else to say. It's just clean right now. It, it's looking good. Um, this team is going to be in a good position to uh, handle their business on Sunday. I'll talk more about the game tomorrow. But yeah, clean. Both teams should be very close to full strength, all things considered. See you guys later. Go Hawks. Uh, pass Rush Friday later. And... Um, Hope you guys uh, hope you guys are excited for this one because you're gonna have to be excited to get up this early.